I am. Um, hey guys, Rachel. I'm going to be the speaker today. So um, I get to sit up here and talk to you guys and try not to cry um, and tell you just a little bit about myself. Most of you I know, I recognize, but um, for a few of you I don't. My name's Rachel, and I am started my I started my mothering journey 11 years ago, and I think you've all noticed that I'm still continuing that. Um, haven't been pregnant for 11 years, but it sometimes feels like it. <laughs> Um, this is our sixth child, and um, my husband and I have had a lot of questions asked to us. I don't, you may have had some of these as well, but um, we've had the questions or the statement, oh, a boy and a girl, now you can be done. Um, or do you think you'll have more? Or how do you do it? Or you must be busy. Or are all these yours? <laughs> and my favorite, yeah, my favorite is you all need to watch more TV. Like, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Is that America's favorite pastime? I don't know. But um, some of these statements I haven't figured out ha how to answer nicely. Sometimes in my flesh I want to be a little bit rude back to them. But um, my honest answer to the question, how do you do it? It's taken a while. But God has been um, kind to me to give me this answer. Is that um, Sometimes it's very messy, but God is so good. Um, it's taken me many years to be okay with this answer. I didn't like being messy when I first started out being a mom. I thought I had everything all figured out. When I had my first kid, I read books. I had gone to college. I was the oldest of five siblings. I thought I knew it all. And people tried to give me advice. I was like, okay, but I don't think you know what you're talking about. So I would just kind of shun that. Um, I did not really truthfully enjoy being a mom with my first child. I didn't like not sleeping. I didn't like having somebody attached to me all the time, literally attached to me all the time. Um, I didn't like being in my house based on his schedule all the time. And I didn't um, enjoy leaving the working world and now being at home where there were not people that I could talk with that had kind of been there. My friends were kind of starting the journey a little bit after me, so I didn't have that much support, I felt like. Um, then he was a pretty good mom, but I didn't really know what to expect. And he thankfully has survived. He's almost 11, and I think the experiments I tried on him, he survived those. <laughs> like he straight doesn't remember a lot of the early ones. Um, our second baby came two years later. She was a dream. She slept all through the night at, at three weeks old. Um, I even started potty training my son, which took nine months, um, right after she was born. I could go out and do stuff, and she was just able to go with us. She slept in the car seat. She slept in the stroller. She was great. I loved her. Um, my um, husband and I, our plan, life plan, was to have two babies and then see how we did with those, and if we didn't break them, we might try for three and four. Um, we were going to wait a little while. Um, but number three came faster than what we had thought she should come, and we weren't sure we weren't going to break our kids yet. So um, she came. She was due December 30th. And my family was visiting me from Ohio. If you don't know, I'm not from here. Um, and this is where our third baby was born. I'm from Ohio, and this, which is 10 hours from here, where my parents are. So they were visiting us for Christmas, and it was all exciting because I had all my family here. They, they got to see her, well, not see her be born. That creeps me out. But they got to be right outside the room and heard her cry, and then they met her, and then they drove home. And my mother-in-law came, and she stayed with me for a week, and then she went home. And my husband was already back at work by the time I got out of the hospital. So I'm dealing with all of this. Holy cow, I have three babies. <laughs> um, they're all at home with me. I've got nobody here that's responsible except for me. Um, it was right after Christmas. I don't know if any of you, any of you have that trouble, but right after Christmas, it's like, it's done. Everything's over. And, um, and I was like that. I was, I was having trouble. And one of my friends actually pointed it out to me. She's like, are you depressed? And I said, no. No, I am not depressed. I am fine. I just am having a little bit of a hard time. And I got in the car shortly after that, and I started crying. And um, because during her first month of life, not only did I have all these things that I've already mentioned, but I decided that everything we ate needed to be started with this. You know what this is? Probably not, because most people don't do this right after they have a baby. This is wheat berries. So everything we ate that had anything grain, like cookies, pancakes, bread, all that stuff, 
we had started six months earlier making a transitional change in our nutrition. I ground all of our wheat from this to get our flour. Another dumb idea. I decided to make yogurt from scratch without a yogurt maker, which is like a five-hour process. So I'm, I think I was probably nursing over the stove. I think that's probably how that went. Um, oh, and the most important thing was that my four-year-old, he had just turned four. He desperately needed to learn how to read immediately. All of these thoughts are going through my head. All of these things, I'm stressing myself out. Um, I called my parents in February, and I told them, if you don't come here now, I'm not sure all of us are going to survive this. And I wasn't kidding. Um, I didn't have any plans for anything, but just feeding them was all-consuming. Um, and I was, I was in a very bad spot. And they came down, thankfully, through snowstorms and helped me out and kind of got me back on an even keel. But um, that was just the beginning of the process of God showing to me that I needed to be broken. See, I was all geared up after the second kid to be super mom. I mean, I had everything lined up. My second child was a dream. Third child was rocking my world. I was not going to be super mom. And how was I going to deal with that? Um, God was so good to show me during this time that I had made this perfect shell of perfection around me that I didn't really want anyone to break through. And he was chiseling through that. And it hurt. It hurts to have your dreams taken away. Whatever kind of dreams those are, it just hurts. And um, I had to become okay with God peeling through this brokenness and this shattered mess that I feel like he was leaving behind and showing me that it was going to be beautiful when he was done. Because he's the one that's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, so these six years since my oldest child, she's a, not my oldest, this third child that changed my world, she's um, going to be seven this December. My relationship with God has been so much deeper than it had ever been before. Um, when I feel things are getting out of hand, God is good to give me reminders that um, maybe I need to check my own attitude. Maybe it's not the circumstances around me that's out of control, but maybe it's my attitude. Um, if I'm trusting him each day, there really can be beauty in the midst of messiness. Now, when I say messiness, I don't just mean my house, which is messy. <laughs> I have three older kids that can pick up after themselves and can help me run things around. Um, but the messiness is mostly like how I interact with them within my house. Um, and my... Am I harsh with them in my words? Do I cut down my husband, either with my words or in my mind? Do I um, want to be made a lot of? Uh, by saying that, I mean, do I want to be praised? Do I, do I want to have somebody say, look, you're doing a great job? I think we all need that. But am I basing how I feel about myself based on what other people are saying about me? Um, and then when I don't get these things, how am I bitter about it? All of these attitudes, um, when I confess them to God, he helps me to stop doing it. He helps me realize I need to stop doing it first. And then he helps me stop doing it, thankfully, when I, when I submit to him. Um, there's a song called Blessings by Laura Snorri. Okay, some of you are nodding your head. You've heard it before. I heard it um, on the way to OB appointment a couple years ago. And, like, I was... I don't want to play this, but I have to, because I have to confess to you. I was texting it into my phone so that I could remember it while I was driving on 75, so I hope you weren't passing me at that time. But I was like, I've got to remember the song. So let me um, play, I'm just going to play a verse and then the chorus for you, so that you can appreciate it too.
That song just really touched me when I heard it the first time, and it still continues to make a mark in my life. Um, do I want my life to be comfortable, or do I want my life to be used by God? Um, to be used by God, sometimes it takes getting out of our comfort zone and being willing to do what he's asking us to do, which is usually harder than what we signed up for. But it's so good when you do. Because think about having control. Would you rather have it? Or would you rather have God have the control of your life? I think he does a better job. Um, this theme this year is a beautiful mess. I hope by sharing some of my beautiful mess, <laughs> there's lots more, believe me, but I hope by sharing just a little bit of it, you'll become to be comfortable with your own beautiful mess in your life and what God is doing with you. And as you feel those pricks of, oh, this isn't right, what do we do about this? That you'll turn to God and ask him to help you. Um, make the next step we want to make. Thank you.